Atsuko Fukunaga. She is a Jaimar Ecological Research Statistician in the Noah Papahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument it, <laughs> office in Honolulu. She has a PhD in marine science from University of Auckland, a master's and bachelor's in zoology from UH, and a bachelor's degree in life science from the University of to from Tokyo University. Atsuko conducts statistical analyses on a variety of components of coral ecosystems, such as reef fish and benthic systems, particularly from the Northwest Hawaiian Islands. I'm not going to say the title of her talk because John ruined it by changing his title. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, extraction of habitat metrics from 3D reconstruction of coral reefs 3D versus 2.5D. And um, I'm working on this project with John, who just gave his presentation, and also Randy from Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. <laughs> okay, so we use uh, structure from motion photogrammetry to obtain habitat information um, at our fish survey site. So basically, divers finish their fish surveys first, and then take overlapping photos while swimming over coral reef. And then we use uh, this software called IGSoft Metashape to build um, these uh, 3D models. So I'm going to focus on how to extract habitat metrics from these models. Okay, so here's a, a small 3D model. Uh, it's one meter by one meter plot. And one way to extract habitat metrics is to use digital elevation model, um, DEM. So DEMs are not 3D, uh, they are 2.5D. So if you zoom in, there are X and Y horizontal coordinates and they form cells and each cell contains a Z, Z value. And here uh, it is represented by different colors. So 2D, comes from X and Y, and 0.5D comes from the Z values. And you can process uh, DEMs in ArcMap. So here, if you draw a line, then you can calculate rugosity, which is uh, actual distance along the contour, divided by uh, linear distance. Or you can actually use a polygon to get surface complexity which is 3D surface area divided by 2D planar area. Uh, also using ArcMap, uh, you can, uh, with extension called uh, Benthic Terrain Modeler, uh, you can extract metrics like slope curvature, uh, vector ruggedness measure, VRM, um, and these metrics use three by three surface scanning window. So for example, uh, VRM, it looks at these nine vectors orthogonal to the surface and measures their dispersion. And with these metrics, you basically get a value for each cell. So you can take an average to get like mean slope, mean curvature, or mean VRM for your plot. Okay, so fractal dimension is another metric you can extract from DEMs and you can use R software for this. It utilizes information obtained at different spatial scales. So to explain, here's a 3D model. Then you can export a DEM at one centimeter resolution. And you calculate 3D surface area. Then you start aggregating cells. And each time, you recalculate 3D surface area. Then if you plot a log resolution and log 3D surface area, the relationship is linear, and fractal dimension is two minus the slope of this line. And as you can see, it increases as habitat becomes more complex. Okay, so here are some of the metrics you can extract in 2.5D, which is all nice and good. But because DEMs are sort of like a top view of, of a habitat, it loses certain structure like concave or like overhang. So sometimes you do actually want to extract habitat metrics directly from 3D mesh models. So here's a 
close-up of a 3D mesh model. And as you can see, it is basically a bunch of triangles. So there are vertices, and three vertices create a face. And you can extract a metric called the vector dispersion by looking at where all these faces are facing. Okay, so vector dispersion is an estimate of vector variance for all vectors orthogonal to the individual planar surfaces. So this normal vector is the vector orthogonal to the face. So you basically look at uh, the variance of all normal vectors in your 3D mesh model. So it's very much like VRM in 2.5D. Okay, so uh, what about fractal dimension? You can uh, extract this particular type of fractal dimension in 3D. And what you do is basically to put a sphere at each vertex. And then you calculate the total volume of all the spheres. Then you start increasing the radius of spheres. Then each time you recalculate uh, the total volume. Then fractal dimension is three minus the slope of log total volume and log radius. So this one is also very similar to um, fractal dimension in 2.5D. Okay, so here are all the metrics that I just talked about, and the question is which one is better? Right. So I looked at, um, I processed a bunch of uh, reef plots and extracted all these metrics and basically compared them, and it turned out that they're all highly correlated with the exception of mean curvature. So curvature is a completely different metric, but everything else seems to capture a structural complexity of coral reefs really well. But there must be something different, right? So I created these five different models and extracted digital elevation models from them. So this one is flat, and this one's got um, gentle slope. And this one's got steep slope. And this one sort of cuts under. So it's like a concave. But with digital elevation model, we are looking at, at it from the top. So it sort of becomes a drop. right? So here's the slope, and then there is no more slope. And number five, this one cuts even deeper. So it's like an overhang. And again, digital elevation is just a drop. And between four and five for DEMs, uh, there is a slight difference. I know it's, it's a little bit hard to see, but there is actually a bit of yellow along the lip here, and then this one doesn't have so much. So there is a slight difference between these two. So I used these five models and extracted uh, some of the metrics that I just talked about. So this one is surface complexity. So this is a 2.5D metric. And as you would expect, uh, surface complexity increases from one to four, but there is not much difference between four and five. Mean VRM, this is the one that looks at uh, dispersion in vectors. And this one is interesting because despite the fact that there is such a little difference between these two, it actually detects the difference, so it keeps increasing. And another interesting thing is that uh, there's the biggest increase is from three to four, so that's where the slope becomes a drop. Uh, this is mean slope, so this is another 2.5D metric. And as the name implies, slope actually measures slope. So it captures this slope and this slope. And what's important is that when the slope becomes a drop in digital elevation model, the value actually decreases. So three and, uh, four and five actually have lower value than two or three. Okay, so this one is fractal dimension. So for this one, this is a 2.5D. Um, so this one is pretty much the same as surface complexity. It just increases one, two, four, and there is not much difference between four and five. But if you look at uh, fractal dimension in 3D, it shows a very steady increase from one to five. So it does capture uh, structure like concave or overhang. 
And this one is vector dispersion. This is also another 3D. So this one is the one that looks at the variance of normal vectors. And this one is very similar to um, VRM in 2.5D. So it increases from 1 to 5. But the difference is the biggest increase actually comes from uh, 2 to 3. So that's where gentle slope becomes a steep slope. So there is a difference. OK, so um, here's some final and some additional thoughts. Um, structural complexity of coral reefs actually comes from coral morphology and substrata themselves. So we need to think about um, how each of them affect all these different metrics in both 2.5D and 3D. And 3D reconstruction of large plots may have some holes. And I didn't really talk about this, but the whole point of extracting metrics in 3D is to capture something that cannot be captured from the top view of digital elevation models. So if you have a really large plot, and if you're focused on taking your pictures from the top for the sake of time, or whatever the reason is, then there happened to be a ledge, then you will capture the top of the ledge and the bottom of the ledge, but not in between because you don't have any pictures taken from the side. So in this case, digital elevation models will assume a vertical wall, opposed to 3D mesh model, just they don't have anything there. So sometimes it is better to assume a vertical wall than not having any structures at all. Right? So this is something to think about when you're picking between 2.5D and 3D. And Finally, processing digital elevation models is currently much faster than processing 3D mesh models. And I'll say currently because I am really hoping to improve my scripts for uh, 3D mesh models, and hopefully it will get faster. But the truth is, like right now, there is a huge difference in processing time. So with all the information that I just presented, I would say 2.5D is simple and fast and it is suitable for a relatively large habitat plot. And this is especially true if you are focused on taking pictures from the top because you have limited volume time, whatever the reason is. But 3D can capture a lot more details, and it is suitable for a small close-up plot or monitoring like specific coral colonies over time. And that's it. <laughs>